Hey everybody, welcome to more Whizbang's Workshop Reveals. What has he been working on today? He's been working on Rogue. Uh, I predicted a little while ago, actually through the course set rotations, that maybe we'll see Pirate Rogue again. And boy, we've seen Pirate Rogue again as a mechanic. Uh, first though, let's see a card that I think may go into Pirate Rogue, but could go into multiple Rogue archetypes. It is Sonya Water Dancer, a 4 mana 3 3 legendary minion. After you play a one cost card, get a copy of it that costs zero. This card is going to break the game. <laughs> Obviously, this is not back to Sonya's Shadow Dancer. No longer does she dance in the shadow, she dances with the water with her pool noodles. Very nice, I like the idea of it. Uh, and fits the theme, you know, of one cost cards, because that's kind of what Sonya Shadow Dancer did. Now, unlike uh, Sonya Shadow Dancer, where you had to play the full man uh, of the. The other card before you got the one drop, now you're playing on the one drop and you get a discount on the one, so you get like a zero mana discount on it. Sorry, not a zero mana discount, you get a one mana discount to take it to zero. And any time a card costs zero, alarm bells go off, the sirens are going, red flashing lights in my head, because whenever there's a zero cost card, it normally breaks the game. If you can create zero cost cards, that also normally breaks the game. And immediately people have started trying to break the game with this. So there's numerous combos out there. The first one immediately that struck me was Treasure Distributor and South Sea Deckhand. If you play your Sonya Water Dancer for four, you throw in a Treasure Distributor. That gives you a zero cost Treasure Distributor. You play your other Treasure Distributor. It gets one attack, right? You play a South Sea Deckhand. Presuming as well you have a weapon joiners, which isn't too unreasonable for Rogue to have a weapon set up before this turn. Uh, you play yourself to the deckhand, it gets plus two attack from the two treasure distributors, you get a zero cost. You play your other one, it gets plus two attack, so you have, you know, four... Two times four, you have eight damage in charge. That's a lot of damage, and it doesn't bear in mind as well the idea that you could then put another deckhand on the board, get another four damage, you could have had another treasure distributor out there. In fact, the only thing that limits this combo really is board space. However, Rogue has a lot of access to cheap damaging spells, including stuff like uh, Backstab. You could easily see a world where you start sending out these deckhands, and you just backstab your own deckhand to create space for another deckhand. And I don't know, you maybe start cranking this up to 6 damage uh, a deckhand instead. So that's the first thing where I'm like, okay, this could break the day. In combination with this, though, you can also run this combo. What about Deadly Poisons? You play your weapon, you throw a Deadly Poison, it gives it two attack. You get a zero cost copy. That's basically one mana for plus four attack. And I was talking about this with Demon Hunter, that it's normally stated around two mana. It's a real big deal for this to cost one mana, especially into Rogue, which also has a lot of access to weapon damage. You can also play Valera's Gift, and inside of Valera's Gift is a Deadly Poison. So you could gift into gift into poison into poison into poison into poison into poison into it, it's, it's like hundreds of damage. Now people are working out online. And I think they're actually doing the calculation wrong unless I'm wrong. I believe Valera's, Valera's gift, you'll get a one mana deadly poison. So you have to pay for the mana of the gift and the poison itself, the temporary one. But I think you'll get a copy of the temporary one. So you could easily see a world where you generate giant weapons. Now, if you're in the territory of not being a combo deck and you want to be a meme deck, you can also throw through... I'm oh, sorry. Also, you can get one maker to generate these one-cost cards. There's 10 one-cost spells in Rogue right now. One of them is Valera's Gift, another one is Deadly Poison. So you're currently running a 20% a chance to uh, get one of those. Back to meme territory. If you want to go to meme town, Chaotic Tendrils, they're one-mana minion. So you can get a Chaotic Tendril, play it, and you'll get a free one that costs zero. So you can definitely env envisage a world where... You yog, fill your hand with tendrils, and then the next time you play Sonya and just start vomiting out tendrils and just let yog take the wheel. I will definitely try to do that at some point. You could also see a world where Clearance Promoter starts to chisel away at your two drop spells instead to generate stuff that could be copied by the Water Dancer. For example, you could easily take a mana off Harmonic Hip Hop, and then you've got deal one damage and gain three attack on a weapon. That's a lot of value, especially if you then get a copy that costs zero. You do another one damage to the face, you get another three attack on the weapon. So I firmly believe there is going to be a pirate weapon deck out there, and it is going to be hyper, hyper aggressive. There may also be a variant out there that is a combo deck instead with Sonya plus, you know, the cards I'm stipulating here. But I think it will actually just go straight into an aggro deck and be seen as finishers instead. Uh, we are still not done with Sonya, by the way. What about Mech? Mechland. Mechs generate a lot of one-cost 
uh, cards. The spark bots, for example, are all one cost. You play your from the scrap heap, you get a little spark bot, you play the spark bot, you get a zero cost copy, but you magnetize that to the spark thing. You get the drift. You could generate a really giant mech out of spark bots with something like Eventum, Inventomatic. So I think Son, you could definitely see a play in Mech Rogue as well. Uh, obviously, Mech Rogue is going to be not quite as strong as it once was, but it's still going to be, you know, it's still going to be Mech Rogue. It's going to have disgusting early turns. And I can see Sonya adding a lot of value to it. Uh, the final thing, and I, again, I don't think this will really come to fruition. Velrock is often bounced back in Mining Rogue with Shadow Step, at which point it costs one. You could easily play Velrock with Sonya on the board to generate you two Velrocks instead of the second one costs zero. And they all have charge, by the way, so just keep smoking the face. Similarly, you could do Bounce Around featuring Garona to make everything one drop, but at that point, I think it is too much value and too much mean potential. So, uh, yeah, I don't think you'll ever see that. All right. Let's get to the pirate support now. I promised it. Here's a great start. A toy boat. Two mana, two, three. After you summon a pirate, draw a card. Wow, that's really good. It's a very well statted two drop. For having a draw stipulation on it, of course you have to pay the money to play the pirate to get the card. Uh, but it's infinite value. There's no limitation on it. If you can keep, for example, playing zero cost pirates, you'll just keep drawing card after card after card. Obviously, the quality of this depends on how good the pirate pool is, and there are a few pirates that are rotating out through either the corset, in the case of Buccaneer, or because Voyage of the Sunken City brought a lot of this aggro uh, pirate rogue deck from before, and obviously we're losing all of that support now. Still, though, there are these pirates in the corset, not including the ones we're going to see coming forwards. There is Swashburglar. I don't think you're going to see that in your aggro... Uh, pirate deck. Treasure Distributor, you'll definitely see it. South Sea Deckhand, you'll definitely see it. Bloodsail Raider, you'll probably see it. I don't think you're seeing Plagiarizer. Fogsail Freebooter, maybe. South Sea Captain, definite. And Dread Corsair, definite. So, there's a lot of decent pirates in. Actually, a lot of them are pirates from the past, like the South Sea Deckhand, which, by the way, is rotating into the core set, in case you're wondering why I'm including it. Uh, South Sea Captain as well, pretty old card in the core set. And I definitely think that we'll see play in this pirate deck. And Dread Corsair, very solid card. More solid cards. If, you know, the tugboat or whatever it's called wasn't good enough for draw. Dig for treasure. One mana spell. Draw a minion. If it's a pirate, get a coin. All right, you could argue this is zero mana. Get a... Draw a minion. That's pretty good, right? Again, you're kind of averaging that the coin is worth one mana. And... Oh, sorry, sorry, it's worth minus one mana because it's a zero mana thing that discounts for one. That type of thing. Uh, and this is a one cost card. So as long as you get a pirate, and you're probably playing this in your pirate rogue deck, there's a pretty good chance you're getting a pirate, right? So zero mana, draw a card. Very good. Reminds me a lot of Insight, which I mentioned on a previous episode, was used to draw a Radiant Elemental and discount it to zero. Uh, you don't need to do Corruption for Dig for Treasure. Unfortunately, it only goes onto Pirates. But that might be, you know, that might be fine. If you're running your aggro Pirate deck and you want to draw the Pirates and refill as quickly as possible, this is a very efficient card to do it. And the coin is very useful for combos. Bear that in mind in the future. Sandbox Scoundrel. 5 and a 4, 3 Pirates. Miniaturized. Battlecry, your next card this turn costs 3 less. And here is the mini, which is a 1 mana 1 1. Uh, also makes your next card cost 3 less. More mana cheating rogue! Disgusting! Truly, truly disgusting. Now, the only thing that's positive about this is the sandbox scoundrel is coming up very, very late. And it's not super aggressively statted. Now, it is it's aggressively statted in the sense that it is favouring its attack. Uh, but for a 5 cost minion, 4 3 is obviously a weak stat line. That being said, you're going to cheat out a 3 or less pirate. Obviously, you want it to be a 3 drop pirate. So it kind of depends on the quality of the 3 drop pirates in the pool. And there are a few of them, but they weren't fantastic, right? Also worth noting, Sandbox Scoundrel is a 1 mana 1 1. All the minis are 1 mana cards. So Sonya in theory could get you a 0 cost version of this. So you could have 0 cost discount for 3. That's really disgusting. But I think more to the point is if you're playing a combo deck... Pardon me. If you're playing a combo deck, you're probably going to start with your Sandbox sandbox Scoundrel to discount Sonya by three. So, you know, it's a one-cost card. And then you'll go from there instead. Also worth noting is the card on this turn, so you have to get the value on that turn. You can't play it over for another turn. So I actually think the card itself, the OG card, is a little bit weak, but the mini is 
strong enough to make up for the original. Uh, also, we have a three-drop pirate here. You know, just in case there wasn't enough value, you're like, maybe that's not quite good enough. Uh, here's another good three-drop pirate. And by the way, I think this guy is insane. Three round of three, two pirate. Bargain bin buccaneer. I love the name of it. Rush combo. Summon a copy of this. Do you remember this card, Oasis Surger, which was unbelievably giga broken? Now, I do think it was, if I remember rightly, it was nerfed because it used to be a 4-4, four, four, so it was like effectively the choose one would be 6-6, six, six, and you would normally duplicate this with the uh, the quest, so you would get a 5-mana, oh sorry, 2 minions for 6-6 six, six with Rush for 5-mana. That was a lot of value, but even in the base state, they still saw, oh sorry, the nerf state, they saw a little bit of play, it was kind of like a 5-mana five 5-5, five, five. you played it with the, the Druid quest back in the day, you'd get two copies of it. And that was good. That was really good. Bargain Bin Buccaneer is basically the same thing, but you're trading one health off for it. But I'd argue the combo to make this happen is way easy. You don't have to do any quest lines. All you need to do is play a cheap card before this, and you get two... I mean, you get six foreign stats for three mana, which is rush. That is disgusting. That's insane value. Obviously... The mini is fantastic for this as well. If you play the mini into this, you're playing one mana, you're playing zero mana, and it enables the combo as well. And you can envisage, like, if this is going into turn four, for example, how you have this scoundrel set up. Don't worry about it. If you can get this set up earlier... I, okay, let's be real. It's more likely to be a six play. If you play scoundrel into bargain, bung, buc bargain bin buccaneer into, like, South Sea Captain, then you're looking at, you know, four, three rushes instead. That is a big swing turn for the Pirate Rogue. They can trade them off into your opponent's minions. And you you can retain your big aggressive board. So if Pirate Rogue is a thing, and I think it will be a thing of all the decks we've seen so far, this looks like the best aggro deck out there right now. Uh, this will definitely make that cut. Also will make that cut. Water Cannon, a 4 mana 3-3 three, three weapon. After your hero attacks, summon a 1-1 one, one pirate that attacks a random enemy. Also, pretty good, pretty good. If you have your treasure distributor on the board as well when you play the water cannon, because that triggers on summon, it's kind of like the undead, uh, the undead minion, I forgot its name now, where if you played it undead, it would gain one attack. You can swing with water cannon with this on the board, and you'll get a 2-1 instead that you know does double damage effectively. And that's a lot of a lot of value, a lot of aggression. Very, very good. Also pretty well statted, you're going to get 9 damage out of this weapon for 4 mana, assuming you can swing every single turn. Not including the 1-1 one, one pirates that come out of it, not all of them will go face. A lot of them will hit opponent minions and, you know, will do nothing. I say nothing, they will do, you know, 1 damage. That's nice, right? You probably want it to go face and protect the 1-1 one, one so that it can attack again on a future turn. Uh, Water can also very useful for discounting your Dread Corsairs. And being played with, like, Blood Cell Raider to give it a plus three attack. That, that's a lot of value, a lot of good value. Also worth noting, Raiding Party is rotating back into the core set. So you even have a tutor for this Water Cannon. And it fits so nicely with the Pirate theme. This will definitely be a deck. It's just how good the deck will be overall. Legendary Minion for your Pirate build. Shoplifter Goldbeard. Six mana, five, five pirates. After you summon a pirate, summon a copy of it that attacks a random enemy, then dies. Very similar text to the recommend deck, which is uh, what warrior are getting, which was choose a friendly mech, you get a copy of it, it attacks a random enemy, then dies. Obviously, one of them is mechs, one of them is pirates. Also, the pirate one, you have to pay the mana for the pirate, whereas the mech one, you're only ever going to pay three for it, right? So you can get a very big mech for recommend deck and because of all of this, I'm kind of, I kind of think this might not be a particularly good card, but you'll probably sort it into your legendary act. Also, notice as summon a pirate, not play a pirate. Uh, so the pirate that comes out of the weapon, I believe, would also get a duplicate on the shoplifter goldbeard. So I think this might be a finisher play for your pirate aggression deck. You play shoplifter goldbeard, and then you try and play like one final uh, minion, like a deck hand. Hope it goes face or something, and then. You just swing with everything. Uh, it's kind of a bit of a weird one. I'm not convinced it makes the Pirate Rogue cut. Maybe it'll make it in there, but I don't think it's the first thing you put in there. It'll probably be like one of the last five cards, and it will just sneak in there. In part because we're losing so many Pirates that you're kind of heavily restricted, and you're rewarded for playing 
more pirate minions because you draw pirate minions your draw a pirate card then gives you a coin as well which you can use for combos uh, and discounts and that type of deal so uh yeah i think it's quite nice i like the card but i don't think it's fantastic that being said infiltrator lillian which kind of reminds me a little bit of this where it used to die and attack a random enemy uh, that did see a little bit of play way back when, so maybe I'm I'm understating the shoplifter Goldbeard. Maybe it might be expected that aggro decks now have to be able to go to like turn eight, and you'd be pretty happy to get another pirate from this. Maybe you get it from the weapon. Maybe you get it from playing it as well. That might be enough, right? Maybe it's just the last little bit you need, and you play Goldbeard because of it. All right, Crystal Cove, the new location for Rogue. Three mana, the next minion you summon this turn has its stats set to plus four, plus four, or four, four even, and it has three uses. This card, I think, is really bad. Uh, it is a nod back to the, I think it was called the Crystal Caverns, right? The quest for Rogue, which completely broke the game and had to get Giga nerfed. It used to be 5-5 five, five on the quest. I'm actually kind of surprised it isn't 5-5 five, five on this, because even at 5-5, five, five, I don't think this card would be particularly good. Uh, the quest used to be that you had to bounce a minion back and play it like four times, right? Or was it five? No, I think it was five times because four would be a bit too easy. And once you did that, all minions you summoned for the rest of the game would be five fives. And you'd play a bunch of one-drop minions with charge. You'd play the boars, you'd play the deckhands, that type of deal. This takes the theme of that, but it like, turns it down to... <laughs> I don't even know what to say. It turns it down to unnamed white source. No spice in this whatsoever. So the next minion you play this turn gets its stats set to 4-4. Four, four. You're probably going to do this on your cheap cards, right? Ideally 1-1s one, or, you know, a 2-1 like this. Like, maybe a Cobalt Miner as well. And it's effectively giving your minion, like, plus 3, plus 3 at its maximum. Unless you're going to start throwing 0-1s into this. Which I don't think you're going to. So this is basically 3 mana, give a minion plus 3, plus 3. Which isn't very good. Now, you can do this 3 times... But obviously it's pretty restricting and it gets worse the and might considerably worse the more stats your minions have. So it's all well and good saying like, you know, it's good for the South Sea deck hand. If you have a weapon, you play this, you play the cove, you turn into a 4-4, it gets charged, you know, you're pushing another two damage to the face. But it's just such a large amount of setup for just not a lot of, you know, not a lot of juice out of this. And also bearing in mind the Crystal Caverns or whatever the quest used to be called. That was a like a persisting aura. If you bounce your minion back after you've given it plus four, plus four to charge it again, it loses the four, four. So it is a real one and done. I, I think this is very bad as a location. And as I said, I think at five, five, this still wouldn't see any play. So don't expect to see the Crystal Cove in my pirate decks or your pirate decks. Everything must go. Ah, eight mana spell. Summon so two random four cost minions. It costs one less for each card you've drawn this turn. All right, so the card I'm going to try and compare this to a little bit is Mothership, which was summon two random mechs that cost three or less. So a little bit more restrictive. It had to be three or less minions, not four cost minions. And they were mechs. It was on a death rattle, but it was kind of a fast death rattle because you had rush and you would normally trade Mothership into a minion, kill it, and you would get the two mechs from it. Obviously, this had a lot of mech synergy, but it did see some play in those mech decks at 6 mana. So I think if you can get Everything Must Go discounted down to about 6 mana, it's actually not an awful deal. I think that is like the cusp, though, where you're like, okay, this is fine. 6 mana to get 2 random 4-cost minions. It probably wouldn't see play, but if you did do that, you'd be like, okay, I can be happy with this. Obviously, you want to be getting this like close to zero as is humanly possible, right? Uh, note, you could do that with Gaslight Gatekeeper. Maybe we do... Everyone's talking about, you know, Hand Lock. What about Hang... Okay, maybe not Hang... Uh, but yeah, there's some sort of value rogue deck where you fill your hand with lots of cards. Maybe the Mining Rogue deck, even. You throw your Gaslight Gatekeeper in there with Everything Must Go. Everything in your hand must go. It comes back. Ideally, you get the Everything Must Go back again. Otherwise, big sad times. It costs zero mana. And you get zero, sorry, you play for zero mana, two four cost minions. That's an eight mana discount. That is a lot of value. Value, value, value. Do I think that's going to be good enough? No. Uh, also worth noting, a more realistic idea is probably something like Gear Shift, which gives you three draw. But also noting, you might be saying put this in your Miracle Rogue deck. 
Uh, Miracle Road will just not be a thing after this. We're losing the location from Nathria. Also, Ghostly Strike, Strike going, Gone Fishing going, and all the secret package from Rogue going, which included Double Cross, which was one of the nice draw engines. So they're losing a lot of good draw engines. That being said, maybe this goes into your your pirate deck. Maybe it has enough draw in it with the, the tugboat and the uh, zero mana draw a card, uh, a card, the raiding party. Perhaps you can draw eight cards in a turn with this aggro pirate deck and then just play two four drop minions on top of it. I think it's a bit too much of a dream, a bit of a pipe dream, uh, but you never know. You never know. I do think though this is more intended for some sort of value deck. Uh, speaking of value deck, Fizzle T set. Discover a spell from another class, get a copy of it. All right, <laughs> you keep trying to make this work. It won't work. Obviously, this is good for Tess Greymane and the rogue archetype of playing stuff from other classes. It's a lot of fun, but the problem is random cards from other classes, and this isn't random. You do get to discover it, so it's better than the random cards. It still has no synergy with the rest of your deck. I do think Thistle T set is a better than average card for a test deck, and actually I will probably try and make a test deck work again from this. The card I'm kind of like aligning this to is Hench Clan Burglar. If you assume that a 4-4 stat line is about 3 mana nowadays, then the effect of Discover a spell from another class is probably worth 1 mana as an effect, and this is a 2 mana spell, so uh, yeah, you get 2 Copies of the card you discover for a Discover the Spell from another class effect. It, it works out about right. Hench Clan Burglar did see some play in the Contraband Rogue decks. However, Contraband Rogue really needs some Contraband synergies. They really only have Tess. And as much as I like bouncing Tess back 18 million times, if she's on the bottom of your deck, you just cry. So I don't think this will work. I don't think this will see play in any other deck. Maybe it sneaks into Mining Rogue, but I don't even think it makes it into that list. And that's everything for Rogue. Uh, I, what do you think of it? I think this is a quite an interesting set for Rogue. I think this will be your go-to aggro deck of the opening set, at least from what we've seen so far. Uh, but yeah, I think there's a lot of I, I think there's a lot of things here to like about it. I think this will be a pretty strong deck. Oh god, tomorrow is Priest. Please, please, for the love of God, don't make it Death Rattle Priest. That's all I want. Oh, goodbye. <laughs>